everything's tired right now because of what what has occurred, oh. what has been thrust upon <laughs> us by the farmers. Farmers stole an hour from us again. <laughs> Don't blame the farmers. They're just trying to grow corn to steal children. Yeah, yeah, to let ch- wild children wander into it. And so they can now be like, you're my son now. You got to work on my farm. Cornfields, a.k.a. thresher traps. <laughs> we were just talking about uh, how people would get lost in the corn. And the, you'd, yeah. only, you'd only find them when the thresher would come out. And you'd, like, as Kevin said, a couple extra teeth would be in your chowder, your corn chowder. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always saying chowda. <laughs> Isn't that great? That is that that pipeline system from the Midwest. I grew up next to a cornfield, and that corn is being harvested and sent to Kevin to be put in some some milky cream soup. <laughs> and the sea, and he and Kevin is busy yanking sea beasts out of the ocean to put into it. Yes, every insect I can find on the ocean floor, <laughs> putting it into my, into my horrible chowder. <laughs> Too many kids get caught in my chowder. Is the thing like when I'm when I'm dredging the sea floor? Like there's just a lot of children trying to swim you know you, you bring up sea insects and i always think about how people call shrimp and crabs and and, and lobsters street sea insects but it, and it, and it, that may be true i don't know i don't know what if they're actually connected but that just makes me think that the sea has tremendous power in it because uh-huh. the bugs are so much bigger and more delicious in the sea i mean you may be onto something that ancient cultures were also thinking that the sea has tremendous power in it yeah it seems like it's a powerful thing. Oh, yeah. Scary place. And and the fact that, you know, their equivalent of their bugs are the tastiest bugs in the world. I think that's just a testament to it. Think about that. Yeah. The, if those are the bugs, if those are the bugs, yeah. <laughs> if that's the size of their bugs, there's probably stuff down there that's even bigger and crazier that we don't have any idea. And of. potentially yeah, right? tastier, you know? And, and so <laughs> that's the big thing is there's potentially tastier things down there. You know, there. when those kaiju came out of that rift, I was like, those things probably are delicious. I'd have a bite. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Were they slimy? Did they exude uh, slime they upon kill? They were a little leathery, but I don't think it'd be any different than like eating a gator. Wait, are we talking about specific kaiju? Well, yeah. You know, I was referencing Pacific Rim, and I realized that's not even fair because, spoilers, they're from another planet. The Rift is actually an interdimensional. So they're not even from our planet. So that yeah, they are an ocean. Work. I just want to take a bite one of those. Are they from another planet or from another dimension? Does the rift go to another planet? I don't think Go. Or- I don't. I was about to call Guillermo Goku. Um, I don't think Guillermo <laughs> Go- ever specifies exactly <laughs> where spatially that alien planet is. And you know what? That's good. Yeah. You don't need to know. You don't need to know. We you don't just need need to know. know that they they weave them and three D print the kaiju and send them through. I'm looking at a couple of them. The, uh, one of the category twos is the Oni Baba. Oni Baba is a crab, and that has some delicious pincers on it. Ooh. That's got good meat in it. Oh, is that the one from Stacker's flashback where he like saved Mako as a little kid? Yeah, pr- probably. Yeah, it's from it. It emerged around Japan, and it has crab claws. So uh, highly likely, it's delicious. Yeah, Stacker Pentecost cracked that thing open with a an, an Arrow One, you know, a Jaeger that gave him radiation poisoning. That's a great movie. We're walking right into Chad's wheelhouse. Right? I, yeah. <laughs> I, now, now, how about this? A normal, a non-interdimensional uh, kaiju. One from our own planet. Okay. A, uh-huh. a Godzilla, okay. if you will. Okay. You know? Um, yeah. Sure. Are any of those going to be tasty? I think Godzilla, Godzilla's going to be, like you said, like a crocodile. Yeah. You know? I've had like crocodile sausage. It's not bad. You're gonna have to, yeah. You're gonna have to process it or or stew it if you want it to be good. I think we're zeroing in on. Would a T Rex be any good? And would Jurassic Park race T Rex for just the meat? Oh my god, that's that's the be- that's how you do the new sequel. It's not even about a park; it's about fucking commercial food. Do they not even touch that? Do they not touch like people want to eat the dinosaurs? Maybe it's like me being on Delicious in Dungeon lately, but all I can think of no, whenever I see a magical creature. idea, Kevin. I don't. I think they're only ever like, well, you either go to a park or we have this dumb idea of weaponizing them where. Soldiers will have a gun that shoots a targeting sound at another enemy, and then the Velociraptor will go, I'm going to eat that person instead. It's a, it's an <laughs> awful system. It's an awful, but like... Wait, so you're... Yeah. Now the, you're you're saying that the dinosaurs are eating people, are being used to eat people, not that we're raising factory ra- factory farmed dinosaurs well, to eat. No, yeah, I think, I think the, the dumb Jurassic World movies are about this like really awful weaponized system. And Kevin is cracking. Um, oh, that's the real thing. Yeah, the much yeah, the dumber thing is the real thing in in Jurassic World. <laughs> okay, um, okay, okay. Uh, but like, yeah, Kevin's getting at the bright thing of it should be for like mass cons- consummation of like a rare exotic meat. Oh, that's yeah. 
I think the barrier is that militarizing dinosaurs is rad as fuck in concept. Yeah. And eating dinosaurs for their meat sounds like a bummer and too close to the actual truth. But that's, I, I think that, I think that right. realism is what gets me, Kevin, because then I'm also like, yeah, dinosaurs fight back. You need all these dumb, dumb men because Hollywood, if you yeah, need a want... bummer interpretation of a popular uh, of a popular uh, brand, hit me up. That is so much better than Jurassic World. I cannot tell you how much better that is. Even if they're not factory farming them. Yeah. The dinosaurs are dying. Yeah. And we should be harvesting their meat. Someone is eating that meat, right? They're not just throwing the dinosaur, dead dinosaur meat out, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Like, if I'm the janitor and I'm seeing, like, a big... F- <laughs> with, like, a dumpster full of, like, dip- Diplodocus or something. Yeah, I'm, cut- I'm cutting off a Diplo ham steak. Oh, I'm taking, yeah, taking it home, home yeah, that for sure. night. But then yeah. also you're like, this is the yeah. best meat I've ever had. I want more. You got- yeah, that- okay, that's the story. That it's it's about a janitor who becomes addicted to Diplo meat, <laughs> and aren't those the tiny little the tiny little complo comp, compy ones? No, no. Di- Diplos are Diplos are the big. They're like the bron the what is it Brontosaurus? That's the long neck, right? Oh, they're the ones that kill Newman. No, 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 no. Diplodocus is a long necked dinosaur. Oh, I'm it's kind of like a Brontosaurus. I was looking at Dilophosaurus. I'm sorry, there's probably some people listening who are just like they are so wrong. You're thinking of Dilphosaurus. Yeah, I'm thinking Dilph- <laughs> I'm always thinking about Dilphosaurus. <laughs> Well, wait, is that a new Goosebuds character? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, another dad-related Goosebuds script. Dilphosaurus, hot dad, we all want to fuck, but also he can eat us. <laughs> He's loaded with the good meat. Do you, do you remember those old Jurassic Park toys from, from our youthful age where they had uh, trademark Battle dino, damage? Dino damage, yeah. Like, <gasps> yes! Yeah. Oh my god, those you were, just unlocked a memory. Those were basically just like flank steaks. Dude, I am always thinking about the battle damage uh, Jurassic Park toys. Well, which was hilarious because it wasn't even like a like a gun centric movie at all. <laughs> no, no, it was, well, it was dinosaurs taking bites at other dinosaurs. I assumed is that what it was? I thought it was guns. You thought they were just shooting them up, I, and like on. just squibbing some dinosaurs. <laughs> hold on, let me see. Battle damage. It toys. was like a car door sized, like removable <laughs> chunk. <laughs> from like the ribs, D- despite them being plastic, and me eating plastic is one of my biggest fears. Doesn't that? Did they look, look kind of good? Didn't they like kind of want to take a bite of them, like like fried chicken skin? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I just have a bite. Just see what uh, J. Kenji Lopez Alt says about cooking it. <laughs> <laughs> Who dat? He's he's the one with all the good cooking tips on YouTube. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. He plays video games now. Yeah, too. he plays video games now. Well, that uh, makes him cool. Kenji, you're invited on this show if you would ever like to be on it. He just started a podcast. What's he talking about? He's, ta- he's talking with another chef about recipes, and they're comparing recipes. Yeah. Well, that's good. Oh, you know, I watched the video that he did where he, I think he was t- he was doing a new version of, oh, fudge, what was it? It was something, and I was like, this is insane. He had like a three-ingredient mac and cheese that looked really good. That's what it was. It was the mac and cheese, yeah. and he was using some, he was using like a non-cheese component to make it cheesier, and I was like, you're a madman. Yeah, it was his uh, <laughs> evaporate. he had like a can of evaporated milk, which I have no idea yeah. where to get. Uh, you have to time travel back to 1950 to get one of those. Damn, well... <laughs> Um, but yeah, he's got all. He and Chef John have all the good recipes on the internet. Yeah, they are quite good. I'm still just trying to think about, like what other. Yeah, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to think about other kaiju, like normal American kaiju I'd eat. Like Mothra, Mothra would not be tasty. Mothra would be gross, and Mothra doesn't deserve to, to be eaten because she's beautiful. Unless you know, Mothra might, might like maybe with some cocktail sauce, might you might get like uh, a shrimp yeah, cocktail. Yeah, kind of Mothra scampi. Yeah. Yeah. What is a moth but a sky shrimp? <laughs> <laughs> King Kong feels feels wrong to eat King Kong because that's just a big monkey. Yeah, I don't want to eat King Kong. I want to hang out with him because he's a buddy. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm not trying to eat any Abe. That's a little too close to cannibalism. But like King Ghidorah, like eat him like a sushi. That'd be delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but moths, if you really kind of look at them, are a little tarantula like. I don't think I want to eat them. I mean, if it's fried, if it's battered and fried, I'll, I'll pretty that's much true. eat anything. Battered that's and fried true. with the sauce, like. Yeah, that's true. I was trying to explain to people I work with, like who are all younger, and and I, they seemed shocked that I thought the world only had like twenty or thirty more years. Which maybe that's his own conversation. But I'm like, yeah, you know, like we gotta <laughs> we gotta prepare. I was telling them how I genuinely believe in a couple of years, like in a decade or so, we're gonna be eating just grubs, like uh, 
like Dave Bautista in, in Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Like we'll just be grub farmers. Oh yeah, or death like like Death Stranding. We're going to be eating the flying grubs. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, those guys are just wiggling around in the sky. I mean, a lot of cultures eat bugs, and they are a very uh, like cheap and renewable source of protein. So I think there is a non dystopian version of us incorporating more bugs into our diet. I agree with you. I just think America will take will for the dystopia will have to happen for Americans accept it. Mass sure. accept it. It's mass accept it. It's like kind of prohibitively expensive, but there is a, a bitters out there made with crickets. So if you're making like a cocktail and you want to add a little bitter portion to it, uh, you can use cricket bitters if you want to start acquiring a taste for insects. Okay. Crickets are going to be the are, are going to be the first step oh, yeah. into into bug eating. And I think it's appropriate that we would eat locusts yeah. before as the as the first thing that we would like reverse nature's plaguishness upon itself is yeah. us just scouring the earth of all the crickets and eating them all that's actually like my favorite part of a book i read in middle school uh which is called things fall apart yeah i know that one there's like a plague of locusts uh and the missionaries in africa are all freaking out about it and everyone who lives there is like ah shit free food and they have a big like locust fry and it's fucking awesome i don't know i thought it would be uh, a delicious crunchy time i think so i'm not a, i'm not opposed to a cricket i haven't eaten one yet but yeah i think if they were if they were made like processed in some way that i didn't directly see the cricket body i think yeah. i'd be okay with it yeah. maybe i'll finally invest in that cricket bitters and then i'll make a, a cricket cocktail or something <laughs> like that yeah 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 let's start by drinking our cricket yeah yeah yeah, yeah. mash them up <laughs> Welcome to Goosebuds. <laughs> Welcome to Goosebuds. I'm Kevin. I'm Chad. I'm Paul. And the prophecy is true. Normally, we do. <laughs> 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 All right, we're recording this on daylight savings time. Uh, yeah. So we're all a little sleepy because the it's a terrible way to run a clock. <laughs> uh, normally, we read R.L. Stein works or other YA novels. Sometimes we also read adventure books, little little ditty into the into the book realm. Uh, and today we are doing that with Paul reading us a book I don't understand called Zork. Yeah, it's Zork. <laughs> so uh, I, I if, for those who follow along week to week on Goosebuds, I was gone last week because I was on a journey to find a to find this book, and I found Zork, Whoa. the forces of Krill. Holy shit. <laughs> We we sent you to Arrakis and you come back with Zork. I came back with Zork, baby. I didn't even need. I didn't even touch that that uh, worm bucket. I wasn't even interested in that. I found a I found a Zork book and I got out. Uh, tell us more about Zork, Paul, because I keep thinking I have not I have not researched this book at all. When you mentioned it, um, I thought Zork. Do you was know an, anything of Zork? I thought Zork was an adventure game. It is an adventure game. Well, it's the one where you're about to, you're you're about to be eaten by a Gru. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you like type enter. Go right. Use Zork. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. This is that Zork. Yeah. So sor- certainly there will be a Gru in this. This is that Zork. Yes. This was uh this book was made in. I'm gonna find the year for it here. This book was uh, August of 1983. So probably not long after Zork itself was made. Whoa. Zork. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. 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 Zork one, 1977. I apologize. This is this is actually six years after Zork one. We had already yeah. had Zorks one, two, and three released. Presumably the krill were introduced in the games at this point. I'm assuming this is building off of that. Uh, looking at the cover, the one I see of some real just like muscular, like lacrosse playing lizard men. Uh, I did not realize that, you know, normally sometimes these have like a like, choose your own adventure book or like pick your own path book. I love this is called a what do I do now book. <laughs> 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 what do I do now? We are truly empowering the children with these What Do I Do Now books. Hey, if you don't know what to do, you're just living the book. Okay, so guys, there there is a little preamble. So I think this is, uh, okay, what do I do now? Uh, what do you do now when you pick up this book in the bookstore and you're looking at it? Welcome to the kingdom of Zork. You were bored. There's nothing on TV except stupid reruns. Oh. You wander into your local bookstore hmm, and pick up an interesting book entitled Zork, The Forces of Krill. As usual, you turn to the first page and begin reading. The book is set in the magical land of Zork, where the evil and powerful warlock Krill is about to conquer the kingdom, and only you can save the day. There are trolls, gnomes, lizard warriors, sorcerers, and a giant empire to explore. It looks like this book is good. Okay, yeah. Now, we have, do you choose to save the kingdom? If so, purchase the book and turn to page five. <laughs> 
Or do you choose to go home and watch reruns, turn to the next that page? That was so fast for a choice. This is the best choice we've ever had. Wow. We didn't even buy the book yet. Do we die? Or do or are we just condemned to a life of misery? If we... uh, well, you, you need to make a choice. You need to choose. Well, let's buy the Would book. You... I'll Venmo you, Paul. You want to defy it? You want to defy it real quick? Yeah, let's just let's, let's use our uh, our crystal of future sight and see what would happen if we de- if we deny the call this is this is not one of our lives which we haven't we haven't established as no, have no limited, this is our one time yeah yeah our one time use item crystal future sight we're wasting it on this yeah uh-huh. yeah uh in front of the tv your eyelids slowly close a strange sound fills the room <sighs> suddenly your eyes open you realize that you have been snoring. You can't get that Zork book out of your mind, but the bookstore is already closed. Think again. Wouldn't it be wise to purchase the book now and turn to page seven? <laughs> the pages have changed. <laughs> I guess let's pursue this new future. All right. All right. Just before before we lock in, before we're, yeah. we're totally immersed in Zork. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what kind of boy are we? I just want to establish that my part of the brain, my, my, my half of the brain is obsessed with getting devoured by a Gru. Okay. That's so funny. That's so funny, Kevin. And I, because I think where my brain was, I'm thinking about Shrimp Fest, is I want to eat as many monsters as possible. And I haven't even seen okay. Delicious in Dungeon yet. I just want to. Oh, wow. I just want to conquer some fantasy meat. I feel like there's some synergy there because, Chad, your inclination will grow your body. And, Kevin, your inclination will be. Uh, made easier by the larger, more delicious-looking body that your child has. If anything, our characters are is dedicated to establishing a fantasy food chain where we eat other things and some things eat us and grues eat us. Yeah, you're munch brain and I'm grew brain. <laughs> so if you're new to our uh, What I Do Now episode, uh, <laughs> what, what Do I Do, I do now? now episodes... <laughs> Uh, we usually, uh, since two of us will go on the adventure and the other one is the BM, the bookmaster, uh, the other two uh, tend to split the hemispheres of the brain into two, uh, motivation sectors, uh, to help with the decision making in the book. So, uh, just, we, we have now decided that one brain half would like to be eaten and one would like to eat. I love that we're anticipating that Zork is going to drive a lot of new people. (laughs) This is going to bring, this is going to bring people. This is an onboarding episode. You know, there's probably someone who's like, I consume all Zork related media and they have Google alerts to go off for a new Zork. They're going to be sad that they're going to be sad to see that it's just another covering of the Zork book that they know very well, but they're here to see what we do. Hello, new listener, fan of Zork. Yeah. If us reading Zork is the entry point for your Goosebuds experience, please tell us because that's amazing. Yeah, I would love to know. I won't play any other adventure games. I don't even want to try Baldur's Gate 1, but I love Zork. Real Zork heads only. It was a warm, sunny day in early May. June and Bill were going home from school. They were wondering how to spend the afternoon. Should they bicycle to look out past in the hills outside of town or explore the deserted fort on the riverbank? Whoa, what? Yeah. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really want to... De- well, I, there's not enough forts in America anymore, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't really want to do either, they realized. The old games, the old explorations, they simply weren't fun or exciting anymore. Bill and June discussed this feeling as they passed the unused water. These kids are emotionally available to themselves in a way that I don't think many kids are. Yeah, they're also like living some kind of rust belt, demilitarized dream or something like that. <laughs> what? What? Aban- where, where in the country are there abandoned forts? <laughs> This book is evoking already very well. Uh, Bill and June discussed this feeling as they passed the unused water station beyond the schoolyard. (laughs) It's brick walls hidden by a jumble of wild bushes. Suddenly, June stopped walking. What is it? Bill asked. I thought I saw something glowing there under the bush. June pointed at one particularly thick and twisted bush. (laughs) Bill was skeptical, but he followed June to the bush and helped her pull the branches aside. They both saw it at the same time. It's... It's a sword. Yeah. Yeah. This book rocks. Pa- first page, an ancient sword of elvish workmanship added Bill. <laughs> like the one in the story we read in cl- This is a cool world. This world rocks. They read about like the one in the story we read in class today. What school <laughs> reads shit. about elvish yeah. workmanship sword stories? I, I had to read I- Old Man of the Sea. That that <laughs> yeah. show's boring. <laughs> He reached for the sword, turned to page eight. We're going to get a choice right here, guys. Wait, June cried. It's a magical sword. It could be dangerous. Yes. Now, your choice. What do you do now? Do you think Bill should take the sword? Go to page nine. Uh, Do you think Bill and June should ignore the sword and continue home? Go to page 13. Wow. No, curse me up. (laughs) 
<laughs> that, that means take the sword. Yeah, like, t- give me that cursed sword, because if curses are real, then this unlocks a lot of things about the universe for me, so. If if I found a sword in any part of Indiana in my childhood, that'd be the best day of my life. Better, this is an old uh, Pennsylvania saying, better to be cursed and have a sword. <laughs> Ben Franklin yeah, said that, yeah, I, I believe. That. Yeah, that was, that was that is a penny wisdom from Ben Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like a it's like a nickel wisdom with inflation, but yeah, <laughs> it's like a it's like a dollar twenty five <laughs> wisdom from from that time. Shit, Bill laughs. Don't be a ninny, June. Whoa, I won't I won't cut myself. He reaches deep into the heart of the bush and grasps the heft of the sword. Oh, we're As in England. Touches... That's why there are forts. <laughs> Is the... Oh, we're got Fort Knights. Yes. Oh, because they conquered so much land. Fort yeah, Fort. That's Knight. why. That's why we're. That's why we're calling people ninnies. I believe we are in England. <laughs> uh huh. And grabbing a the haft of the sword. We don't talk about haft hilts. If you called someone a ninny in Philly, you'd get your ass stomped, I imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it sounds like kind of Italian, so it's a little, it's pretty insulting to say ninny. <laughs> Don't call people ninnies. <laughs> As he touches the sword, it begins to vibrate wildly. <laughs> there is a sound like a distant explosion. Immediately, a blinding, this is a curse, a blinding light flashes from the blade and surrounds <laughs> June and Bill. When the light fades and the two startled friends can see again, they realize that they are no longer near the school. They are on the winding path leading down from the rocky foothills to a lush forest in a valley below. (laughs) Behind them, impassable mountains rise, their tallest peaks lost in the clouds above. Their clothes have changed also. They are now wearing heavy cloth tunics tied about the waist with wide leather belts. A large leather pouch (laughs) hangs from Bill's belt. Bill and June stare at each other with mixed excitement and fear. Suddenly, a group of knights on horseback come up and eviscerate them with their lances. Yeah! (laughs) Wow, quick path to dead. (laughs) You are are dead. Never touch a sword, you idiot. Damn it. (laughs) 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 Suddenly, Suddenly, Ben Franklin resurrects you and says, always touch the sword, you double idiot. Keep going. <laughs> wow, Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin, we were fools for doubting you. Fools for doubting him and, and dying. I was ready for, like, since I'm so, like, RL traumatized at this point, I was ready for the distant explosion and the glowing sword to be a prank. Like, it's nope. it's your friend from math class yeah. with the laser pointer who always plays pranks. Right, right. Yeah, no, things are happening, actually. Goosebumps has really taught us to not trust anything or <laughs> expect anything good to ever happen to us. It's making me reject the magic of a book called Zork, The Forces of Crit. <laughs> <laughs> If if school and goosebumps have taught me anything, it's that books are boring and are trying to make you have a bad time. <laughs> Not in Zork. In in school, you read about elven blades. Elven blades, and then what? And then you find an elven blade outside, and then you're taken to a magical land instantly. <laughs> my dr- my, so many of my dreams have started this way. Also, this is an isekai. We're in an isekai. This is an isekai. Oh, I can't. The title of this book is "I Can't Believe I Touched a Magic Sword and Got Transported <laughs> to a World Where I Was Cut Down by Knights." And my sword <laughs> is also a cute girl who's into me. <laughs> Recently resurrected by Ben Frank by by Ben Frank by Ben Frank's magic. <laughs> The, the 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 knights on horseback come galloping around a bend in the trail, heading toward the forest. The leader of the knights, his steed whiter and more powerful than the others, pulls away and approaches. <laughs> Are you ready? You ready for this? Bivotar, Geronda, we feared you were lost to that demon, Krill. Bivot- ah, you have the sword. The knight pauses, thinking, I don't have the time to stop. Your uncle, Siovar, <laughs> is meeting us at the campsite. Meet us there and bring the sword. If you want to know what's happening, since you've disappeared, you might seek the old man in the village, but don't talk to him until you hurry and bring us the sword. Okay. The tall knight points up the path toward the foothills, then gives a farewell salute and gallops off after the others. Now, your choices. Follow the knights to the campsite, page 14. Find the old man in the village instead? Go to page 17. Okay, I'm... I'm uh... I feel old like man. I want to find the old man because a knight on horseback is basically a cop, right? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. And a cop that knows my name is Bivitar and or Geronda, like, <laughs> that's dangerous. And I feel like Ben Franklin <laughs> is the old man in the village. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, you found my time portal, how I've, I've been taking lesson, learning stuff from here and bringing it to America to make America the country it is. <laughs> 
I've been Bioshock <laughs> infinite <in> this place. <laughs> what do you say, Bivutar and Jiranda? You're going to go see the old man? Uh, hop, hop. Let's go see the old guy. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Toting the dimly glowing sword, Bill heads up the trail towards the foothills. Come on, Jiranda, he calls back, <laughs> calling June by a weird name. Soon the two brave adventurers are surrounded by bleak rolling hills. The few trees that grow here are gnarled and crooked, and clouds cover the sun like a permanent gray stain upon the sky. Jiranda shivers and moves closer to Bivotar. <laughs> <laughs> These names are great. <laughs> Uh, around a bend in the road, they spot a few huts nestled between the barren hills. As they approach the village, a bearded man emerges from the closest hut. You escaped, he cries. He is the he is a very old man. Yes. His long beard is as white as the tall knight's horse, <laughs> and his face is deeply lined and wrinkled. Come in, you must be hungry, he says, entering the hut. The pair follows, their eyes slowly adjusting to the dim interior. As the old man ladles three bowls of stew from a cauldron simmering in the fireplace, he asks, Have you heard any news since your escape? Things are looking very grim. Jiranda glances at Bivutar and speaks, Um, actually, we haven't heard any news at all. Can you, uh, fill us in? Turn to page 19. We had uh, soup. Actually, I'm not from this place. I think you assume a bit much, old man. <laughs> The ancient villager's eyes glaze over as if recalling some dim memory. Of course you know that your uncle, Siovar, was unable to prevent the fall of the great underground empire, the GEU. The empire <laughs> under the rule of the Flatheads controlled controlled every neighboring land and was the most splendid kingdom in the history of man. Surely no colonialism was happening <laughs> during any of this. But the Flatheads had become decadent and the forces of Creel had grown so strong and that not even a great warrior wizard like Siovar could stop them. Since you were captured by Creel's servants, over 200 years have passed here in the land of Frobaz, what? in the kingdom of Zork. <laughs> what? 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 Go on, yes, Frobaz, like, uh, go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Unpack it, please. All right, so uh, there's an underground kingdom that our uncle was the lord of, but it fell to Krill. Yeah, the G-U-E. G-U-E. G -U grand Underground Empire. Great Underground Empire. Or, very close. Or, or Great, yeah. or great the, Empire Underground, if you're French. Ruled by the Flatheads, of course. I, I check my hands to see the, if we're dwarves, but I know we're not. Yeah, I hate to break it to you. I could tell you're not because uh, you're living in places with windows. God damn it. <laughs> You know, that's yeah. There's a win. There's clearly a window in this. Thank you for being honest with us. I appreciate it. Yeah, it, 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 it yeah, hurts to hear, but okay. So two hundred years have passed. Two hundred years have passed here in the land of Frobots. Yeah, <laughs> in the kingdom of Zork. But Siovar has been un unable to overcome the evil that has taken the land. To gain victory, we must have the sword of Zork which I see you have rescued. He will also need the the Palantirs, the three crystal spheres of legendary power. God damn, um, oh boy, those are those are bad news. What? I'm if, having, if I'm having trouble following the politics of this world. I just want to eat some monsters. Hey, we got soup. We don't know what's in that soup. That's, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Probably something good. Maybe a griffin. Mm. But every day and every year, the forces of Krill grow more daring. No village is safe from their attacks or their spells. The crops no longer grow, and the wind is always cold and sour. <laughs> Our what? own village. As, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, oh, suddenly there at the other part of the t at the tavern, RL's there and he just he raises a mug to you and he goes, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Our own village, as you can see, is deserted now. The men have joined the Knights of Frobaz, and the women and children are hidden away in the mountains. Oh. He sighs deeply, then straightens up and stares at them with piercing eyes. You, Jiranda and Bivotar, you <laughs> must bring the Sword of Zork to your uncle in the forest. The journey will be filled with a hundred terrors and dangers. Remember to avoid the trail of leaves. It leads straight to Krill. Okay. Of course, he adds. You could stay here and be safe with me and hope that the forces of Krill will somehow be driven out of the land. Would you stay with the old man? <laughs> Go to page 23. Would you try to bring... Would you try to bring the Sword of Zork to the forest? Go to page 14. No, nah, this guy sucks. He only has like two games for his Sega Genesis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, am I wrong that the path to the uncle was like what we were going to do the other way? I think so. Yeah. No! Maybe yeah, not. he was saying he was saying avoid the yeah. knights because they're in, they're in the service of Krill, right? No, no, the fight the knights are good. It, and that may have sounded the knights of Frobaz, I believe, uh, are okay. Well, I will say that Chad, your instincts are correct. The chap, the page fourteen is where you would have had it. This was a purely, ultimately, 
you can loop back around to the knights. Well, let's just let's let's uh, meta game this a little bit. You can loop back around to the knights, basically having uh, gone on a little side quest here, or you can carry on with the side quest by hanging out with the old man. All right, but we're agreed. We're not staying with Pep Pep. No, okay. no, no we got some we got some soup, some ambiguous soup, and now we're moving on. <laughs> well, Bivotar, Geranda giggles as they walk toward the forest. I guess it's turning out to be an exciting day after all. I hope we're not getting into trouble, Geranda. Uh, that's not the words of an adventurer. <laughs> Soon the forest surrounds them, but there is no sign of the knights or the campsite they mention. The trees close in overhead, blocking out the light. The forest is damp and quiet, except for the chirping of a distant songbird. The trail narrows, winding so often that Bivitar and Geranda lose all sense of direction. I think I can smell a campfire, Bivitar pu- pulls Geranda down the trail. They break out into a deserted clearing where a dying fire sends a thin finger of smoke up through the treetops. There's no one here, says Bivitar. Look there, Geranda points across the clearing. There, the trail splits as it leaves the clearing. A signpost stands at the fork, and nailed to the signpost is a handwritten note. Oh. The note reads, Bivitar, Geranda, it brings joy to my heart <laughs> that you have returned. Sir Elrond tells me that he met you in the foothills and that you have the Sword of Zork. We must hurry off to battle. The, ar- the armies <laughs> of Krill are massing again beyond the dam, and I fear that they will attack before nightfall. We will go to Elrond's house as soon as possible. Meet us there with the sword. Siovar. We've been here for five minutes, and like word is spreading like wildfire. I think J.R.R. Tolkien's gonna kill some he's gonna like there's sue some, somebody. <laughs> there's some suable material in here. Palantir's Elrond? Yeah. You wanna, it's, spelled, it's spelled E-L-L-R-O-N. Oh, okay. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Like that's yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's and this is why you always leave a note. <laughs> <laughs> Arrested Development, a show with many great life lessons. <laughs> Would you take the path to the House of El... The, the fact that they called it the House of Elrond feel, feels extremely not legally distinct. But <laughs> yeah, yeah they on. at least called it like a shack, made it a little bit more of a... <laughs> yeah. yeah, Elrond's abo- abode. Yeah. Elrond... Would you like to take the path to the House of Elrond, as Yovar request? Go to page 24. Would you like to take the other path to Aragain Falls? Go Shut to page up. page 26. How do you spell Aragain? <laughs> Aragain. A-R-A-G-A-I-N. Well, I mean, we have no reason to go to Aragain Falls, right? No, unless we have a, a broken blade that needs to be reforged. Oh, do we? <laughs> no, we have the stupid, like, altogether blade. Our sword's already put together. That sucks. Um, uh, do you think the paths have leaves on it? I just remembered to watch out for a, a leaf path. Oh, yeah. That's great memory, Judge Jordan. Thank you. Miranda. Do, do either of these paths have uh, Palantir's buy one, get one free, or 50% off, or whatever on them? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, looking at, I'm looking at the illustration for the sign. They look pretty much the same. One is Aragorn, Aragorn Falls is pointing upward, and House of Elrond is pointing downward. So I don't know if that implies any kind of <laughs> difficulty in ascent or descent to the place. Let's go see a legally distinct elf. Yeah, all right, legally distinct yeah. Elrond's house. Oh god, there's scary faces in this. <laughs> Miranda and Bivotar. Sorry, I just saw the scary. No, faces you're very, bra- you're very brave, Paul. I'm face tanking these uh, <laughs> the scary stories. <laughs> Paul's sanity bar is just ticking down slightly. <laughs> Paul's just continually wincing and looking away, and then like Paul running that Tim Nerick sketch going, I'm okay. I'm all right. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> I'm all right. Geranda and Bivatar head down the forest trail towards the house of Elrond. The chirping of a songbird comes again, <laughs> somewhat louder this time. Cheered by the sound and the beauty of these woods, they begin to whistle a cheerful tune. Would you like to whistle? Mm, I don't know. I'm, I think this uh, songbird is stalking us. Okay, the opportunity to whistle was given. I'm just letting you know that you were given the opportunity. <laughs> I, did, I deny the whistling because I'm suspicious of birds. <laughs> Smart. This guy's read a couple of fairy tales. Certain that their uncle Siovar, and it, uncle is in quotes, <laughs> will defeat the armies of Krill and meet them soon. Uh, the trail suddenly forks again. This time there is no signpost. One trail is covered with a thick bed of leaves. The other shows the dirt of the forest floor. Next to the fork in the trail stands a large tree. Unlike the other trees in the forest, it has some low branches and could be climbed. What do we do now? Asked Geranda. What, what do I do now? Yeah. What do I do now, Buck? <laughs> well, well, okay. I, you know, it's a good thing you talked to the old man because you did gain a little information in that old man discussion, did you not? That we like soup? <laughs> 
Was it? Was it the? Old, I think it was the old man that told you about the the, 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 the path of least. I know. Right? I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm making sure. I just wanted to say. Yeah. I'm. I'm, fu- I'm fucking with you. Uh, we're, oh no, no. I know. I just want to remember it, if that was true or not. We're not. I fucked with me I'm so hard. Zorking with you. You know. Yeah. We. Yes. Yes, you zorked me so hard I lost track of what was happening in the book. Listen, we know a disguised Ben Franklin when we see one. That old man was clearly trying to tell us to not take the path of leaves. <laughs> Grandpa Fen Franklin. Yeah. He's trying to capture fantasy lightning spells so he can bring it back to America and take credit for it. And a door to in uh, in Grandpa's hut opened up and you saw a, uh, a a bunch of French sex workers hanging out in there. <laughs> So you you knew you, you knew it was you knew who it was. All right. So your options are your op you have three options here. Take the leaf covered trail. They're definitely the most uh, the most. The, what's happening? Oh, sorry, my I phone was ringing. I was trying to turn it down. I'm sorry. Magical, magical, <laughs> magical music is playing right now. Cut it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought Paul had a soundboard or something. <laughs> I wish. Oh my god! I I completely underprepared for this. All right. So, okay, your three options. Your three options are take the leaf covered trail. Go to page twenty nine. Not a chance. Not a chance. Are we doing that? Not a chance. That's happening. Take the dirt trail. Page thirty two. Yeah. Try climbing the tree. Page thirty five. Oh no, that's a good way to get a fucking concussion, my guy. <laughs> uh, we were born on the ground. We'll die on the ground. We take the dirt path. That sounds like a dwarf to me. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. All right. Take the dirt path. Flipping off the leaf path. Fuck leaves. Dirt forever. All right, Geron. Ger- there, do you agree with that? Do you agree with Bivotar? Yeah, yeah. I I just realized those are both our names. Geranda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I keep forgetting Dur- it's Geranda and Bivotar. Durantha. Geranda Dur- sounds like a bad disease we got in this fantasy world. <laughs> we were hanging out with Ben Franklin. What what disease can't you catch? That's very true. Damn. Let's take. Let's take the dirt path, suggests Bibotar. It looks safer, Geranda concurs. They walk along the trail and soon come to a large clearing in the woods. In the center of the clearing is a white house. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh. Is that the house? Uh Uh-oh. It has, it's it's door and windows are all boarded. On the post near the door, on on the post. Uh, oh, no, I thought they were talking about the post box. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> On the post near the door is a mailbox. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you think this is Elrond's house, Bivitar asks? I shout, Elrond, come on out here, you coward. I shout it. <laughs> Elrond, show yourself. Elrond, fight me IRL. <laughs> Debate me. <laughs> yes. Look, the mailbox says, Elrond. <laughs> they walk around the house looking for a way to enter. The doors and windows all seem tightly sealed. Then behind the house, Geranda notices that one window is slightly ajar. Bivitar tugs on it with all his strength, and finally it opens just enough for them to enter. If you're going to be an E. They crawl through the window and find themselves in a kitchen. On a table are a bottle of water and a long, a long sack smelling of hot peppers. Huh. Okay. I don't know about you, but I'm starved, says Duranda. She opens the sack and finds a hot pepper <laughs> sandwich and a clove of garlic. Yuck, I'd prefer peanut butter and jelly, but I guess it's better than nothing. <laughs> she gives half the sandwich to Bivitar, and they share the water. Neither eats the garlic. What? Garlic's delicious. In the, in olden times, for sure, you need that to protect you against uh, vampires. Different types. Oh of- no, that's totally what's going to happen. We should. Re- if it's going to be like, do you want to bring the garlic with us? And we'll be like, yeah. You're and then be like, it, there's yeah. a vampire, and we'll be like, garlic. I thought it was for protecting you against foul humors. Oh yeah, that too. It's probably going to be like, there's a miasma. Your your humors are not balanced. You need more phlegm. You're too sanguine. <laughs> well, that really hit the spot, Bivitar says. I hope Siovar gets here soon. Let's look around the house. The first, I like that you be and eat and then ate someone's lunch. Yeah. The first room they come to is the living room. It is furnished with heavy with a heavy wooden tro- uh, trophy case. Inscribed on the case are some ancient runes. They realize with a su- with surprise that they can read the runes. Oh. Only when the three Palantirs of Zurich are returned to this case can the evil be driven from the land and the great underground empire, the GUE, rise once more. <laughs> sitting on a lo- sitting on 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 top of it is a battery powered brass lantern. A heavy oriental rug covers the floor. We've got to find the spheres and bring them here, says Duranda. Sure. But what'll we do in the afternoon? Bivitar says, laughing. What? <laughs> a little bit of humor for you guys what? there. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and laugh. I'm going to look under this rug for a trap door. Bivitar laughs even harder. Sure, sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. 
Yeah, Bivitar is a bit of a goof. Jaranda pulls the rug to one side of the room, revealing a trap door. <laughs> Bivitar's jaw drops. Blam! God, he says it crashes through the trap door, revealing the horrors beneath. Yes! How did you know that would be there? I just felt a bump under the rug. She, exa- she examines the door. It's locked, but there's a keyhole. Did you get the bronze key from the bird's nest? If so, go to page 50. No. If not, go to page 53. Sorry, guys. Should have climbed that tree. Should have climbed God the fuck out of that tree. damn it. Oh. This is what you get for sticking to your lane. <laughs> well, we're on page 53 now. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, the guys, I'm wincing, at, I'm wincing at a horror. Oh, no. Be well, brave. Be brave, Paul. We certainly, don't, we certainly don't have a key, Bivitar points out. We'll just have to wait around for Elrond or Siovar. The day has been exciting and tiring, and the two adventurers are soon asleep on the soft living room rug. What an adventure. Some unknown time later, they are awakened by a crash. Elrond enters the living room. Most of his armor is gone, and he is bleeding from <laughs> and stained from battle. Quick to your feet, he cries. The forces of Creel have routed our army and have the house surrounded. Siovar has already fled to an, our underground base. He is such a coward. We must escape underground <laughs> through the trap door. <laughs> but it's locked, Jaranda points out. Elrond manages to chuckle. <laughs> of course, but I naturally have a hidden key. I keep it on a stringer on the neck of my songbird. Oh, uh, bird. fuck off. Oh, fuck, mother. we ate the songbird. <laughs> <laughs> the bird and cage are guarded by a spell of invisibility. He waves his hand briefly and recites a strange incantation. <laughs> a moment passes and a tall bird cage appears. <laughs> So magical. I'm sorry, now I'm laughing. This dude's bleeding to death, and he's like, you didn't find my invisible bird? All right, first day in fantasy world. (laughs) Get real. A moment passes, and a tall bird cage appears. Its door is open, and the cage is unoccupied. Elrond's face turns ashen. The songbird is gone. (laughs) Curl's powers are too strong. We are doomed. A heavy pounding comes from the front door, and the sound of breaking glass can be heard from the direction of the kitchen. All of this because we didn't climb a tree? You gotta climb trees, guys. The front door splinters apart, and suddenly a horde of lizard-shaped warriors are upon them. Bivatar, Jaranda, and the knight are led away in chains. Only doom awaits them. The end! Wow, dead. Wow. Ready? Someone got a piece of paper? Someone got? I got paper. I got this. Okay. I have paper. I also have paper. Yeah. Uh, so if you stop here, your score is a three out of ten. Ooh. You probably deserve another chance. If you want, so they they tell us to. They're giving us the uh, life, an extra life right away. Oh, so thank it, you, it, book. It's to go yeah. back. Yeah, it's okay. us to go back to page twenty-four. So I'm just gonna <laughs> take the leaf-covered trail. Go to page twenty-nine. Take the dirt trail. Go to page thirty-two. Try climbing the tree. Go to page thirty-five. Try climbing the tree. Let's take the leaf path let's go let's let's fight some guys <laughs> i was gonna say like you it's kind of it sucks because you guys got that information and it, you're kind of being railroaded but i'll let you go any old way you want <laughs> well i mean this is why you know dungeons and Dragon, dragons exist this is why tabletop rpgs exist mm-hmm. i want to fight we're... on the leaf path kevin oh we're just gonna die again but all right no, we i can't make it all right we can make I it can't... we can survive let's... I can't look at him. He's so he wants to die on the leaf path, and he, he no, I want to eat. Yeah. I want to feast on the leaf path. I want to spill a, a meat blood down my gullet and go. I live in this Zork land now. I am I am Jernernia. <laughs> yeah, Jiffany wants to go on the leaf path, and I got to pick the path last time, so we're going on the leaf path. <laughs> All right, leaf path. Let's take the leafy path. Suggest Bivotar. Leaves are fun to walk on. <laughs> The leaf-covered trail is wide and (laughs) well-marked at first, but it becomes harder to follow and finally vanishes altogether. Jaranda and Bivitar decide they should turn around and go back, but they discover that they have lost the trail completely. They blunder aimlessly through the forest. The trees become thicker. The light grows dimmer. Strange and sinister noises come from the woods around them. Bivitar suggests looking for a place to hide. How about that big old pile of leaves? (laughs) Says Jaranda, pointing. (laughs) As the noises become closer and louder, they tunnel into the pile of leaves like a couple of worms. Nice. Reaching the center of the pile, they discover a metal grating beneath them. It leads into the darkness below, a worm home where you're most comfortable and you definitely want to live. 
<laughs> it leads into darkness below. Without warning, the gratings swing open and they fall into the darkness. An eternity later, Bivitar and Jaranda come to rest in a room dimly lit by flickering torches. Before them, sitting on a mighty throne is a dark and evil figure. We made it! Hatred shines from his, from his blood red eyes. They can easily guess that this is their enemy, Krill. Yeah, run at him. I'm glad you have returned, roars Krill with a deep, <laughs> rumbling laugh. <laughs> I must admit, I didn't think recapturing you would be so easy. He approaches Bivitar and plucks the Sword of Zork from his trembling hand. Thanks for returning this. And now, <laughs> although you have provided me with a great deal of amusement, I'm afraid you have outlived your usefulness, guards. Tall lizards dressed in battle armor grab them and lead them away towards certain doom. Perhaps, Bivitar muses, we should have taken the other trail. That, that's wow. it? Okay. <laughs> if you stop here, your score is a, two, is a two out of a possible ten points. Guys, you've, you've lost points. I'm sorry, Kevin. I, I thought there, I thought there'd be some, some branching paths to explore and have fun with, but it took us straight into Leaf Pile, took us straight to Bad Guy Lair. We could have lied and said, yes, we have the key. <laughs> That's true. You, I would have allowed... Listen, okay, so you've lost two lives of your three total lives. Yeah. yeah I would say, you, because you're on, you're, you're blink, your, heart, your, your hearts are blinking, you're on the precipice of death, mm. you earn one lie token. If there's an opportunity to lie, you, you can cash it in for a free lie. All right, I'm writing point. down lie token. Thank you. G I put lie token in. You're welcome. I'm going to take you right to the tree, because I know that's where we're going. Yeah, yeah let's yeah, climb yeah. the tree. All right, so we re-backed up, and we climbed a tree, even, even though the right, ground is our friend. Right, and, yeah. yeah. Geronda can climb the tree or Ger Geranthony or whatever. <laughs> You're right. Geranthony is in the tree right now. So. Let's climb the tree, Biv, suggests Geranda. Maybe we can get a view of the surrounding area. Good idea, Geron. <laughs> Sir Artie. Biv and Geron. You're getting so comfortable in this world already. Yeah. Good idea, Geron, but you, but you should do it. You've always been a better tree climber than me. Geranda agrees and clambers into the tree. She climbs as high as she can, but she can't see anything <laughs> besides <laughs> a few surrounding trees. <laughs> she can't see anything besides the few surrounding trees. It's just more trees up here. Keep clambering. C clamber higher. Clamber. However, nestled between two, two branches is a bird's nest. The view's not any better from up here, she calls down to Bivitar, but there's a bird's nest. Who cares? Come on back down. <laughs> Wait. I want to look in the nest. She works her way over to the nest and looks inside. There, among the sticks and mud, is a shiny bronze key. She takes the key and climbs back down to the ground. Look what I found in the nest. She shows the key to Bivitar. Well, hang on to it. It might turn out to be useful, but we still don't know which path to take. I know. All right, we're skipping. We're going to skip. I'm not going to reread. I'm not rereading all the BS, you we know. We go I'm not down doing the leaf that. path and we throw the key in Zork's eye and blind him <laughs> and we win. <laughs> Use your lie token to get him off kilter, throw the key in his eye. Yeah. I just felt a bump under the rug. She examines the door. <laughs> it's locked, but there's a keyhole. <laughs> did you get the bronze key from the bird's nest? You did. Go we to did. Yeah, we did. The key from the bird's nest, Bivitar says. Try the key you found in the tree. Geranda inserts the key in the lock. It opens easily. The trap door is heavy, and the two of them pull with great effort until the door swings open, revealing a rickety staircase leading down into the darkness. Vivitar uses magic pockets to open the locked door. <laughs> 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 Awfully dark down there, Geranda says nervously. Maybe this lantern works. Vivitar turns the lantern on. Where'd you get a lantern? And it gives off a cheery yellow glow. Let's go down and have a look around. <laughs> oh, the lantern was in the the lantern was in the living room. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Sure. Uh, they go down the stairs and find themselves in the cellar of the house. On one side, they see a, the bottom of a metal chute, black with coal dust. It mm. looks very steep and slippery. On the other side, a tunnel leads away from the cellar. Strange, gurgling noises seem to come from the darkness beyond the reach of the lamp. <sighs> uh -oh. This is too spooky, Biv. Let's go back upstairs. As Joanna starts climbing up, the trap door crashes shut above her. They seem to hear a deep-throated chuckle, but the sound could just be their imagination or some trick of the underground echoes. A quick check reveals that the trap door is locked and that there is no keyhole on this side. I guess we might as well see where the tunnel goes. They follow the tunnel for several minutes. Its walls become rough and uneven. The tunnel turns a corner and opens into a small underground room carved out of rock. At the far end of the room, the tunnel continues. Another passage, dark and sinister, leads off to the left. 
Out of the shadows leaps a huge and hairy troll. He is brandishing a bloody axe and blocks the exit, the far exit of the room. Bivatar sees a blue glow from around the Sword of Zork, and he feels... <laughs> they're not taking anything from Lord of the Rings here. And he feels a powerful energy. Oh, uh, this lights up for trolls, not goblins, so... <laughs> he feels a powerful energy flowing from it into his arm. Without even thinking, he strikes a fighting pose and approaches the, the troll. The troll oh, spits shit. out an... Spits out an angry snarl and raises an axe above its ugly head. Biv, this way, Jaranda points to the low, spooky passage to her left. You'll get killed if you fight that troll. Would you escape down the sinister-looking passage? Go to page 56. Would you fight the troll? Go to page 59. We're going to eat that troll. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know what our stats are, but I would like to eat that troll. So Trolls is good for eating. I feel like we follow... Here's Here's what my intuition is saying. Mm. We run and we follow down that path. It's a dead end. We get trolled in in the head from behind. Yeah. <laughs> but take the troll head on. Yeah, take take the troll head on. We find out that our magical sword is a sort of troll busting. Okay, it did turn blue. Kevin, we could die here. Did it? Didn't didn't Paul did, just say it turned blue? Actually turn, the tr- that was that wasn't an embellishment. That was not embellishment. That was literally a part of the story. <laughs> okay. Then I think we have to attack the troll. With yeah, the I think sword. Fantasy God is on our side at this point. Okay, all right. God, I'm 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 genuinely nervous at this point. Well, this is it. If we like, if we die here, then Paul has to tell us what the afterlife in Zork is like. Yeah, you're uh, you're rogue like in it, right? Or not even rogue. <laughs> you're 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 playing hard mode. This is hard mode. Now. We're rogue lighting it right now, not rogue liking. Yeah, well, rogue like. Yeah, there you go. There you go. We, we don't have it. all day to get into why those are different. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Bivitar follows the urging of the sword. Yeah. As the troll rushes at him, axe first, he jumps aside and swings at the troll, missing by an inch. The, gr- the troll grunts and swings the axe at Bivitar, who ducks just in time. The axe crashes against the wall, throwing off sparks. The sword grows warm in Bivitar's hand. Yes. With a mighty effort, he raises the sword and swings it in a wide arc towards the troll. The troll seems confused and freezes just long enough to doom himself. The sword sinks deep into the troll, who lets out a wail and expires. His body vanishes in a cloud of billowing black smoke. Yes. Damn, there's nothing left. Left to eat. Kevin, put the put the Final Fantasy VII death sound in here, please. Thank you. And the, and then the victory fanfare. Yep. Thank you. Good. You did it! Shouts Duranda. I thought you were crazy. It was. It was almost as if the sword made the decision to fight the troll. I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> he scratches his head. It just sucks that it left no body and nothing for us to eat and grow stronger with. Oh, my that's right. Oh, I, I, I quickly lean down and just, like, lick up some of the ash. Like, I just want to, like, rub it on my gums, <laughs> just trying to get a little bit in my mouth. You gain one extra calorie of energy from the... Oh, from the I'm, oh, I'm writing it down. We're at one of, two, yeah, of our 2,000 yeah, yeah. calories for the day. Mm-hmm. After your feast, you enter the wide tunnel that exits from the far end of the troll room. It widens and finally opens onto a flat ledge overlooking a vast underground lake below. A steep trail leads down into the water's edge. Sprawled at the far edge of the ledge is is a skeleton of a deceased adventurer. Clutched in his bony hand is what appears to be a parchment scroll. Do you take the parchment from the skeleton's hand or do you follow the trail towards the water? (laughs) The last will and testament of Ben Franklin. (laughs) <laughs> loot, loot this obviously disguised Ben Franklin skeleton. <laughs> you unravel the parchment. It says, on this land, make a country and do capitalism. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, buddy. I put his little skeleton arm up and high five him. Remember, do capitalism when you're done. We will, Ben Franklin. We will. Yeah. Thank you, Ben Franklin. Jaranda approaches the skeleton and snatches the parchment. As she does, the bones collapse in a pile of dust. Jaranda jumps back in surprise. Shaking, she unrolls the parchment. Look, she says it's a map. She points to an inscription at the bottom. Uh-huh. This map shows the final resting place of the three Palantirs of Zork. Oh, we needed we needed three of those, so we have one of three. No, we have a map that shows us where the three. Oh are. my god, it's not even the. Oh my god. Don't worry, guys. I'm getting you the map. I thought it was going to be a spell. I thought it was going to be a spell of like uh, water walking or uh, water breathing or. Um, that thing in Airbender when like he makes like the bubble around himself. Oh yeah, yeah, I love that. Your instincts are 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 fine, Kevin, but uh, instead <laughs> you just you simply got knowledge. Something you would a classic Ben Franklin trick. I already you know. had knowledge. Now I have more. <laughs> Your knowledge grows. Okay, so it looks like our options are because all right, there be trolls. We killed the troll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's where you came in, I believe. It looks like you, if you had not gone after the troll, you mm-hmm. probably would have ended up uh, in a maze. In the maze. In the maze. Oh, the maze has a palantir in it. Huh? Well, it looks like you're going back to the maze. Sheet. No, wait. No, that's just that G. No, that G just marks where a, where a Gru lair is. Oh, he's right. He's right. Oh, G yeah, shows, shows Gru lairs. Okay, so that's not a, a palantir. There's no palantirs marked on this map that says where palantirs are. This map shows are. the final resting place of the three palantirs of Zork. Oh, it says that, no, there's a, number three. Number three, right? Oh, yeah, we're at the reservoir right now. Oh. So we came up of there be trolls. We're down the reservoir. And there's a dam. That's probably something. I don't see a goddamn single any... palantir on this map. Yeah, I don't know. But we shouldn't go on the cliff ledge or whatever. We should go down towards the dam because there's a Gru in the next room. And as much as I want to be eaten by a Gru, I feel like if if I, if I if that kills us, then it'll be a sad time. But... <laughs> It would be the be- like the most appropriate way for you guys to lose your last life. But what we could kill it and we could eat it, Kevin. Would that be okay with your brain? That would be everything to me. I'm yeah, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we have to carry on still. The, you know, your choice is coming up. Don't worry. Okay. But it doesn't show the final resting place, says Duranda. The bottom corner is missing. The Palantirs must be somewhere down there. Well, oh. at least it shows the ledge we're on, and see it indica- and see it indicates that we should go right. The two adventurers go right and find a very narrow path leading along the side of the cliff. Mm -hmm. Soon they have a view of the entire lake region below, ending at a huge dam. Water Mm -hmm. from the lake pours down over the dam, which appears to be somewhat neglected. They round a bend in the cliff. Part of the path before them is missing, destroyed after the map was made, possibly by an earthquake. The gap is about 15 feet wide. We can jump across, states Bivotar. Are you nuts? asks Saranda. (laughs) Let's think for a minute. There must be a better way to get across. Jump across, page 65. Wait and think, page 66. How are they going to punish <laughs> us for waiting and thinking? <laughs> I know. This, this seems to be more of a, does seem to be leap into action time more. Uh, well, not not to go on the leaf path, so I don't know. Y- you know, this is, this is fucking goosebuds. Are, are we going to sit around and think, or are we going to jump over a, a cliff and do like a cool skateboard trick? Yeah, that's the answer, Kevin. We're doing that. Jump, 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 jump. jump, jump. jump, jump. They attempt to jump across the gap and plunge hundreds of feet to sharp boulders to the base of the cliff. This is as unhealthy as it sounds. <laughs> the end. You've died. Would you like to use your lie token? And per- is that really what the answer was? Yes. You got your your score did go up. You got five out of ten by dying <laughs> sharp Great. boulders. Okay. If we get if we get six out of ten, we get a D, which passes. Right. You're still working for a passing grade. Uh, yeah. I'd like to use my lie, lie token to reverse time, which is how that works. Okay. Yeah. We were lying about jumping off the cliff. <laughs> it's a good thing you guys it lied. It was a joke. Right. It was a joke we made. Yeah. It was a joke. It was a joke. Right. We, 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 we thought it'd be funny. You wait and think. I think you guys are going to like this one. I could probably rig a way up to get across if only we had some ropes, says Bivitar. Do we have anything to build a hot air balloon from? Asked Aranda. What? I don't think so, Bivitar answers. Looking around, I don't have any other ideas. Suddenly, a gnome appears out of thin air. <gasps> yeah! Yeah, I can build stuff, he says. He is dressed in a loud a loud outfit of bright green and orange. That's a leprechaun. Having some trouble <laughs> getting across, he asks. They nod grimly. Well, I can get you across, but it won't be... I can't read what it says here because it's, the page is fucked up. What do you want? <laughs> he asks hopelessly. <laughs> hmm. How about that nice sword you're carrying? No, cries Deal. Miranda. <laughs> that belongs to what? Uncle no! Silvar. No! <laughs> the gnome is visibly impressed, but he says something. Nevertheless, either of you give me the sword or you don't get across. Duranda whispers to, to Bivitar, we can't give it to him. <laughs> no, we're not giving him the sword. The sword is as cool as that. Yeah, we're not giving the sword. It's our entire reason for being here. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Can I we, say, can we quote give him the sword in that we, we oh, hit him we with pu- the sword? We put it in him? Yeah. I would. That would require a lie token, which I don't believe you guys damn. have. Damn. Yeah, we just... I'm sorry. You know, oh, rules are fuck. rules. God damn. Rules are rules. <laughs> I said, let's go back and try, and try that path toward the lake. I agree. We shouldn't give him the sword, says Bivitar, but hold on a minute. Maybe we can think of some way to trick him. Do you try to trick the gnome, or do you try to take the path to the lake? I mean, yeah, I jingle some keys. It's easy to trick a gnome. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? <laughs> let's trick the gnome that's yeah do you agree yeah I agree. I agree because you know maybe i can eat a gnome <laughs> okay <laughs> i crack his skull open and dig in like that that guy from cannibal corpse or whatever sure man <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm talking about know that nope. metal guy who like ate his guitarist i'm doing that with the gnome nope. oh boy <laughs> don't know that one <laughs> Okay, you greedy gnome bitch. You may have the sword, but only when we are on the other side of the gap. 
Vivitar t- looks solemnly at the gnome. Do you agree? Only when we are on the other side of this gap, you bitch. You bitch. You bitch. You bitch, when we get out of here, I'm going to kill you. Fine, fine. The gnome agrees, eagerly rubbing his hands together. Watch this. It's one of my best spells. The gnome begins chanting in some twisted tongue. He waves his arms wildly. His hair flies about him. His hair flies about his head as if tossed by a fierce wind. Traces of smoke begin to pour from his ears. What? Suddenly, a sturdy bridge spans the gap. The gnome slumps against the cliff wall, exhausted. Area across, the gnome urges. <laughs> the bridge will only last for 30 seconds. Bivitar and Geranda dash across the bridge with the gnome just behind. When they reach the end of the bridge, they stop and face the gnome who also stops. But on the bridge, several feet from the end, the gnome boots boots at them. (laughs) Boots at them? Boots? And and tells... uh, There's there's some transcription errors, I think, here. And tells (laughs) Bivitar to hand him the sword. Ah! Bivitar explains. We agreed to give it you the sword only when we were on the other side of the gap. We are now on this side, not the other side, you bitch. Keep it light, you bitch. (laughs) (laughs) That's some Ben Franklin trickery right there. Ben Franklin taught us that one. Uh Uh-huh. As you can plainly see, there's no one on the other side, you dumb bitch. Run along and play, little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, don't you can cut this. It's out. funny. I I love it's funny every stuff. time for me. I, I wish more fancy <laughs> books <laughs> called you bitch. <laughs> I love it because in my head he's just like a kindly gnome dressed in nineties like neon orange and, and green. And we're just dunking on him. <laughs> Why? That's no. Why you? The gnome looks angry and confused. He leans on the railing of the bridge and runs a hand through his stringy hair. Then, coming to a decision, he begins rolling up his sleeves. Well, boy, if if you won't give me the sword as we agreed, I guess I'll just have to take it. Vivitar gulps nervously. The gnome takes a step toward him, and suddenly the bridge vanishes around him. With a look of stunned amazement, he plunges into the abyss, screaming, "Frobonoi!" <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We, 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 do we drive him to death? What happened? The, the bridge spell was a concentration spell, and he tried to cast another oh, one. Oh, I see. He dropped okay, conk. Yeah. I mean, a break concentration. Yeah. Bivitar mumbles as they continue down the trail. Does the map show now? <laughs> what? Are we, are we over the fact that we, we manslaughtered that gnome? Yeah, we were, being, we were completely unfazed by it. We were complicit in gnome slaughter. <laughs> you were definitely complicit in it. I mean, you didn't actively take. You really made him. You, you sort of co- made him commit like a little, like a, like a seppuku, a seppuku. You know, like yeah, kind of well, like an honor he, death. He goofed himself to death. Like yeah. he was too goofy to live, and we. <laughs> he was ruining our fantasy world, and so we decided he must. He must die. <laughs> what do you think? Who do you think Frobnoid was? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm writing it down. A gnome god that doesn't exist that he falsely believed in. <laughs> Frobnoid, the gnome god. <laughs> Frobnoid, please be make, to Frobnoid. Please make more things in this world small for me. <laughs> <laughs> the path should enter an opening in the cliff somewhere around here, Duranda tells him. Sure enough, a minute later, they come to an opening in the cliff wall. Hey. They follow the path into this cave. The ground drops steeply, and in many places, stairs have been carved in the rock to make travel easier. After what seems like hours of following the winding passage, they spot a point of light ahead. It grows larger and larger, and soon they emerge from the tunnel, facing a stunning sight. Towering high above them is a tremendous dam. Water from the reservoir above spills over the top of the ancient and neglected dam. Below them, the spill-off forms a mighty river. Downstream, sunlight pours in from a gaping opening where the river flows out of the underground cavern and into the world of the sun. This must be the flood control dam number three, Tyrande says, to the map. Uh, it's supposed uh, it's supposed to be the greatest engineering feat in the history of the GUE, the Great Underground Empire. But we couldn't we couldn't name it. We couldn't give it like, you know, the we couldn't call it the Frobnoid or the the Fuck Tingler Dam or like <laughs> <laughs> give it a cool name. We called Fuck it Fuck Tingler is the devil is the devil of the gnome religion. There's Frobnoid is the god and, and Fuck Tingler is their devil. Every every summer my dad would take our family to the Fuck Tingler Dam. <laughs> Bivitar, uh, Bivitar speaks up and says, I now dub it Gnome Bitch's Descent. <laughs> Rest in peace, you gnome ass bitch. Designed by Lord Dimwit Flathead himself. And that's the Frigid River right there. That's, wow. the, that's in the book. I didn't put that. I did not add that. That's in the book. Wow. They, yeah. fucking, they fucking conquered that monarchy. 
Hell yeah. No divine right of kings today, my friend. <laughs> With the sound of hoofbeats, Elrond the knight appears, riding al- toward them along the riverbank. He is bloody and disheveled. He dismounts, looking furious. What in Frob's name are you two doing here? Bifitar and Tyrande look at each other. <laughs> Finally, Bifitar speaks up. We fucking go to school here. <laughs> We we're trying to find the three palantirs to return them to the trophy case near your house, you idiot. We thought we could help. I'm sorry. Sorry for helping. What are you doing here? You should be in a hospital. You're bleeding all over like the greatest engineering feat of the great underworld uh, empire or whatever. Lord Dimwit's greatest creation. Yeah. Elrond gives a tired chuckle. <laughs> Don't be. You both have more courage and cunning than many of my own people to have gotten this far. He looks more serious. But finding the Palantirs is impossible. The map that shows how to find them was stolen over a century ago. <laughs> is this the map? Geranda asks, handing the, pa- the parchment to Elrond. Elrond looks it over with growing excitement. Great fires of Frobizzle. It's the map, all right. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm guessing from context, Frobizzle is the sort of like the the, the Lucifer to Frobnoid. Like Frobnoid's the good, and Frobizzle yeah, is sense. the bad. Sure, that's that fine. We can we can we can set the religion that way. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's the map, all right. How? How? Where did you? Uh, never mind. This changes skeleton. everything. A skeleton, dude. A skeleton. We looked. We looked around. We looked at. We looked for clues. We paid attention to details. Farther. I held down Alt, and it highlighted all the clickables, and I found the skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps there's now a chance. He thinks for a moment. Bivatar, Geranda, this is a grave moment. The army of Quill has beaten our knights in battle today. Stiovar has fled to our underground base. Those of us who are still alive are meeting there to form a last defense against Krill. I was taken prisoner, but I escaped just a few minutes ago. Elrond pauses to arrange his thoughts. I was heading toward the underground base, but this may be more important. If I can get the three spheres to Sviovar before we are completely overwhelmed, Elrond stops as a beautiful gray owl swoops out of the sky and lands on his shoulder. It holds a paper clutched in one claw. Elrond unfolds the paper. It is a message from Sviovar, he explains, reading. <laughs> the knight looks up. This is his so face complicated. Strained. Sorry. This, this is, is a just, lot. This you're is, doing is a, a lot. great job, Paul. This is insane. I say, uh, Elrond, can you turn your owl off when we're having a conversation? Like, <laughs> it's really rude that you're just... <laughs> Can you place yeah. your owl face down on the table while we're, ta- while we're eating? Yeah, like we're going out for a nice meal and you're just on your owl the whole time. <laughs> God, that's real. The knight looks up, his face strained. Siovar says that Krill's warriors are massing for battle already. If we lose to Krill today, it will be the final defeat. I must go there at once. Elrond puts a hand on each of their shoulders. You two have already done a valiant job. But though we may survive Krill's attack today, without the power of the three Palantirs, there is no ju- doubt that Krill will soon be victorious. Continue your quest for the three legendary spheres. The map will aid you, and the Sword of Zork will protect you. And if you are successful, bring the Palantirs <laughs> and the sword to the underground base on the coal mine beyond the dam. Good <sighs> lord. Count on us, Elrond, says Saranda. <laughs> right, adds Bivotar. Yeah, we're down. Sign us up. <laughs> but beware, Elrond cautions, pausing for effect. Krill may try to trick you. He may even appear in the form of your uncle, Siovar. Just remember that Siovar never removes the sapphire ring, the, ki- the ring of Zork, from which his powers flow. He mounts his white steed. Good luck, Bivatar Jarada. He gallops off. As Elrond okay. vanishes in the distance, Bivatar says, no time to waste. Which way now, Joran? This section of the map is incomplete, torn away. But I think... She looks around, then points to a zigzagging staircase leading up the side of the dam. This is the way to the spheres. Did you get the magic sneakers from the Prince of Kaldorn? Is that a real thing? Fuck yourself. Is that... Oh yeah, my God. If, not, if not, go to 88. You know, those are really unethically uh, produced sneakers. Uh, magic they, sneakers? <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're a little gnome kids stitching those uh, sneakers. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't uh, fuck with those sneakers. Not even yeah, slippers or boots? Sneakers? Yeah, dude, fucking fresh kicks, fucking pumas in the deep. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You guys used your lie token, but uh, in 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 essence, a lie token token never expires because you can just lie and say you use your lie token constantly. I feel like yeah, we totally got those pumas. Um, They're they're fresh and not scuffed, and um, they they look they look fucking yeah. And we and we and we and we tied them really tight. They never fell off. We haven't even found a single plantier. (laughs) <laughs> yeah uh, i just want to say um maybe don't lie right now <laughs> <laughs> are they trying to catch us in a lie they, oh they jokes on you. that was never an option book reader that's so good yeah what happens if we lie and said we did what happens here you go here you go there are no magic sneakers and no prince of caldorn in this book you have uh. been cheating 
<laughs> Vindictus, the patron of decision novels, appears, reaching out of the what? book. He casts a spell on you, and you turn into an unbelievably ugly toad. The end. Your score is negative 50 million zillion points. The score for the best ending probably isn't important to a cheater like you who probably <laughs> looks the last page first. Holy shit. That's amazing. Owned. Owned. I feel like that's a good ending. I feel like that is a good ending. We're a frog now. Like we can we can be frog core, like live in our cool little like mushroom house. <laughs> no one no one at any point maybe this wasn't important to the story. I know it was just like the isekai of it all, but I kept wanting to be like, why does everyone in this world think we are someone else? Like are, is there a is there a doppelganger thing going on? Or did we did we switch uh-huh. places with a a, a person from this world that's now in our world, yeah. like kind of thing, I, I did not come up. I kept expecting it to. You, it seemed like you. It seemed like your your bodies entered the bodies of other people as soon as you touched the sword. Yeah, we just sort of warged into them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we didn't get their memories, so we're just kind of like. You know, it's our first. We lied on our resume, and it's our first day. I think when you started shortening each other's fantasy names and started doing that, it's when the memories of the people who you worked into started to like uh, reintegrate themselves into your minds, and you were slowly becoming trapped in the children. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> the sneaker trap is very funny, though. That's very good. So what that is, is, yeah, Vindictus, the Lord. What was it the God of Decision Books? Yep, Vindictus, the patron of decision novels. <laughs> Vindictus. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna canonize and say that's across all of our books. I love that. The, if if they can steal Lord of the Rings <laughs> for this book, I'm saying we're stealing Vindictus for our podcast. Oh yeah, Vindictus is gonna start following us from book to book. Though we we cheat all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, you uh, died three times. Yeah, I feel great about it. Yeah, I think I think honestly, killing that troll was a pretty hype moment. Yeah, and killing that gnome. <laughs> <laughs> we did cut a swath of murder. <laughs> That was our. That was always our goal. Somehow you played a book and you murder hoboed your way through it. <laughs> yeah, we left. We left a trail of destruction in this world. You made your mark, <laughs> and you and you fell into a uh, or you got uh, cursed out of the world with the only map that would allow the people in this world to defeat their great evil. <laughs> we took. It. We burned that knowledge with us. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, because we lied to a British game developer in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> the the greatest crime. <laughs> uh, Paul, thank you for being our bookmaster. That was oh, you're uh, welcome. A messy yeah, book, baseball. but a great book. Uh, where did you where did you find this? Besides, well, Saturday? great news. There are many more of these. So, uh, <gasps> Ooh, yes, please. There are more to be had. So we shall zork again. This was fun. I I feel I feel like we um we didn't have a chance of getting a ten out of ten. But no. this was a good time. Uh, I was looking at what would have happened if you hadn't lied about the shoes and gone down uh to the next area. And the next area, you would have had a choice. Um, and if you picked the wrong choice in that one, you would have failed. But you would have gotten a six out of ten. You would have gotten a passing grade. We found a cool meta story, at least. You know, that's something. Yeah, we I met agree. Vindictus, a god who loves us and only wants to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, you asked where I found this. Uh, I actually follow an Instagram account called Vintage RPGs, which is a, a very good account if you want to follow it, where they kind of just post old um, RPG books that aren't in print anymore, and like old D and D modules and things like that. Um, oh, that's cool. And they, you know, they do like write ups on them and they post new stuff as well. But so this was one of the things that they were just posting a uh, a book that they had found, uh, one of these uh, Zork books. And I was like, oh, we should definitely do that for the show. So, oh, yeah, the graphics are really good. I'm sorry. You're, not, you're probably not getting it through the medium of podcast. Um, but once yeah. you stop, once you stop driving or, or, or performing heart surgery or whatever, you should look at these. pictures. <laughs> we will. We will share it. We'll share it online yeah. and we'll post it on the on the Patreon. Uh so you can see it on the on this episode's link. Yeah, I saved a bunch of of good sh- of good shots of key moments from this episode. Uh, did this book really want us to find in one one life reading all three planters and then or palantirs? Yeah, somehow, that's that's ambitious. It made it sound like the palantirs were all just kind of nestled together somewhere. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, they were already all assembled, just sitting somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was starting to it was starting to seem that way. From the way people yeah, were talking. Yeah, I, w- I was also thinking like these these are like the the medallions in Zelda or whatever. They're going to yes. be like pieced out to us. Yeah, That's the different orbs too. in in uh, Wind Waker. You had to go get those just yeah, in like, right. one part of the Triforce. I thought that's what was happening, but uh, alas, uh, we'll never know because you lied. <laughs>
Let that be a lesson to all of you listening. Don't <laughs> ever lie about anything, if, unless you have an extra lie coin. The, if, and if you lie about the lie token, you will be punished by Vindictus. We should start selling lie tokens on Goosebuds.store. It's <laughs> <laughs> not the worst idea. Speaking of, yeah, if you want to check out some cool uh, merchandise to support the show and and brag about your love of this podcast, you can go to Goosebuds.store. It'll take you to our Etsy page where we have a bunch of awesome original merchandise uh with different designs of us and a spooky skeleton man made drawn by dom uh we have a bunch of cool options there yeah go spots that store B- buy some stuff and do some bragging don't be shy <laughs> yeah brag about us tell your friends be like have you looked at my shirt and they'll be like yes and you're like let me tell you what it's from <laughs> besides telling friends about the show you can also support the show how paul i mean you can do all kinds of stuff you can go to uh itunes spotify leave us reviews there uh you could uh d- d- i don't know just tell a friend that's the, honestly that's the best way ever to any to do anything it's just keep being like hey you should listen to the podcast goosebuds do that to everybody in your life also you can join our patreon at patreon.com slash goosebuds uh yeah if you go to our patreon uh you get access to uh bonus camp goosebud episodes we put out every month you can vote on upcoming books we're reading you get access to our very cool discord uh a wonderful community of fellow listeners uh, and other other red stuff, but that's patreon.com slash goosebuds. Your support keeps this show going. Ah, uh, yes, Patreon. That is the, the promo that Chad was trying to uh, urge me to. <laughs> I liked sorry. your other ones. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can also join our Patreon for free and get little notifications uh, if you're if you know if, if you don't have if you don't have cash right now or or you just want to stay in the loop. Uh, joining up for free on our Patreon is not a bad idea. Sometimes we'll make a public post or something if there's big news that we're not saying on the podcast. But yeah, you can join our Patreon for free if you want. Uh, in this ever fractured internet, following someone on Patreon is a very good place to keep in touch with them and find out what's going on. Yeah, we are most likely to hang around the place that like keeps our lights on and pays us. So you're unlikely to lose us. We hang out at the office. If you want to bend our ear, that's the best way to do it. <laughs> that's very true. You do get access to our um, to our Goosebud <laughs> server and uh, on discord and that uh, that is a good place we've gotten a lot of good recommendations and we've been informed about a lot of great stuff on there as well so uh you can definitely you can definitely chat with us over there if you if you join the patreon what is that uh is that the main tier yeah our our our, two, our main our main two dollar tier gets you access to the discord at camp goosebuds uh gets you access to our bonus episodes and everything everybody gets it i'm still really like that was a lot of fantasy world to digest honestly i want to like think about this world of zork I want to think about krill i need to sit around and, and chew on that like a diplo ducas ham steak for a little bit <laughs> i'm gonna like sharpen my my monster knife and fork and think about future future <laughs> feasts <laughs> so so this is this is how we're ending it i, <laughs> so I mean, this is I goodbye mean, i mean yeah <laughs> i i think so sounds like we're winding down <laughs> <laughs> Watch continue show. Chad's in a Chad's in a D and D game. Give Kevin money dot com. See you, you next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can do the full plug. I'm sorry, I forgot. Also, check out Continue Show. Uh, Paul, you do great new episodes every week. Love love watching it. Every Wednesday, I get excited and I rush to my computer and I knock all the wow, things off you. the desk and I go watch it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're not. Uh, we don't owe you any money for anything that you've broken, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm doing this by my, my own volition. Um, I also, I also love, I also love Kevin. So Kevin, uh, what's the best way? Uh, GiveKevinMoney.com, correct? Yeah, yeah. And also, um, if you're listening to this, there might be a jam going on, or at least there might be a new jam game for you to play. So uh, check out jam.supertrystudios.com to see my uh, Boise game jam that's happening very soon. Uh, or if you're listening to this in the future, it's already happened and you can play my game on, uh, uh, supertrystudios.com if you want. Uh, most of my games are free, but if you want to support me, you can do that at, uh, givekevinmoney.com. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, thank, thank, thank you. Uh, and also, hey, if you want to check out, uh, some more tabletop stuff, uh, I started playing a game with, uh, friends Holly Conrad and Kayla Klein and other friends of the show. Uh, we're doing it every other Sunday. Uh, our next one is on March 17th uh, at 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific time on twitch.tv slash birdholly. Uh, we're doing a magic wizard school uh, in Blackstaff Academy. It's going to be it's gonna been a real fun time so far. You can, you can jump in. Do a tent. Do a tent. Do a tent. Uh, I think otherwise, 
I think this has been a, a Goosebuds adventure episode, y'all. I think it has. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go feast. I'm gonna go feast on whatever outside animals just lurking in my backyard and call it a demon. I'm gonna go touch a magic sword. And get a curse. I'm gonna go find a grill. <laughs> Until next time. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. This episode of Goosebuds is brought to you by our wonderful Patreon supporters, especially those in the very special level of the Book of Names. Book of Names, Book of Names. Starting with Stefan Jive Turkey Kuabara. Lowbelly Hate Me. Hollis Hornbeak. Nathan Dolezal. Mike Lanteri. Mickey C. Michael McDowell. Hey Josh Rob. Cameron Murphy Audio. Buddy Morrill. Mel Dipson. Alecade. Afsheen. Dango Twist. Zentacles. Stealth Bates. Robert Moon. Brian Wells. Jason Crooker. Miguel Pardo. John Keedy. Clay Castle. Calf. The Juggalobalist. Right Aid sucks and is committing fraud. You heard it here first. I keep meaning to look that up. I don't know what that means or if it's true. <laughs> I, I, I get, I'll I, try. I'll try and look that Allegedly up. Allegedly committing fraud in the book of names. But we're just reading the names. This isn't legally binding, but they probably are. Gregory D. Warren. Cody Redfield. Bradford Coulter. Aiden is taking karaoke suggestions. Kiss from a Rose. Best one ever do. Damn, seconded. Jar Jar Slinks. Chosen One. Levi Than. Up and Champ. Jonas Engman. The John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Thank you. Uh, Carl. Anthony Mulberry. Yanni Markovina. Elusive Koala. Christian Vonskiver. Brooke X. Beezus Christ. Jeremy Lowe. Brian Hobgood. Zach Connor. Patreon underscore donator, comma, yo. Joe Spooky Digital Ghost Tierney. Whoa, Tom Whittem. Lord Cornwallis. Anthony's funny name made Andrew Jadzik laugh. It makes us laugh, too. Ho, 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 ho. Murphy P. <laughs> Carson Perkin. Devin Ticklebean, hidden in the trees outside Ice Church with an egg sock. I presume to defend it. Oh, bam! Sean Minogue. Rushy Glenn. Wiggle it! Luke LaFountain. Matt McClellan. Chip Handsome. Tanya Turtle. Alicia Grafe. Juan Jalapeno. Timothy Misudalakis. Reinfected. Keith Halcrow. Clay McCarty. Ham underscore boat. The Crow Fens, but seasonal. Raymond Hernandez. Matthew Sutton. John Barber. Jeff Coffey. Jeff, Jeff Coffey. Jeff Coffey. Jeff. Jeff Coffey. Jeff Coffey. I need some Jeff Coffey. <laughs> Sarah Kemp. Kelsey Kinneman. Jonas Blotterman. Russell Casper. Xavier Jimenez Castillo. Scotty Pippen. Chris Putricus. Flannelly. Tobias Clark. Dungeon Kappa. Zach Weir. Limp Duck. Ice Descendant Hamster in the ice part of the ice. Yes. That's a big part of the ice to be in. Freeze him or unfreeze him or fr- do something. <laughs> Alex Moon, the robotic dog. Meet Virginia. Paul Grasso. Joe, a regular name, Scott. Well, that's to men, a lord of Paul's <laughs> pants. Luke Canoodles. Zambambino. Hugh Bolin. Chris, sleepy time ghost stick. Nelson. It's getting more crass as time goes on. <laughs> Streak. Kieran McNamara. Diet Soda. Lamb. Jackie L. Coleman Laguza. A pair of Scots. Nathan Remick. Levi Kidder. Getting frisky in the lobster biscuit. Mmm. Mm. White cream. <laughs> David Gray. <laughs> Need more kimchi. Matthew Brittato. Bryce Diary. I finally escaped from Paul's vet because the bit was getting old. Bye bye. Paul finally escaped from our vet. Lee Wood. Oh, no. Yeah, we gotta contain him. <laughs> Jonas Ennevoldson. Reed Steubendeek. Ma! The meatloaf! Joey Evans. Boney. Some of Chad's bird friends chirp happily at Canadian Ghoul. That's some good millet. Kaka! Joe Gorman. Carewise Gamgee. Burger's Wonderful World. Nicholas Maloney. Cameron Hansen. Andre Villanueva. A wild swaggy yellow squire appears. Tiffany Lee. Eric Horowitz. Thomas Jancis. The Deadly Bulb. Mutant Astronaut. Lucretia McEvil. Generally Depressing. Henry Torbear. Ben Bahan. Boner Guard Epsilon Hamilton, a.k.a. Hambone, host of Radio Bonaire. Tacky Tammy. Adam Knapp. The entity under the ice is actually Meemle. Oh. Oh my god, <laughs> we gotta keep it down there. Excellent. All, all those Midwestern states. <laughs> Logan Derby. It was really deep under the ice. Check. <laughs> yeah, the spate, the size of it. Brad Schmelzer. Germ juice. 
Calamity Carl. Callum, Mr. Misfire West. Skeletorin. Nick Johnson. Mandy Nasty. Joplin. Philip Reynolds. Ryan Carroll. Nate Bit G. Jeremy Bowser. Mr. Unimportant thought it was Goblin Greater with a T this whole time. Oh, oh those poor goblins getting minced up. Mm, a little extra flavor to your uh, uh, chicken parm. I did some goblin skin Ooh, in my bit. cooked dungeon. Yeah. I'd try it. Scott Wabel. Ryan R. Davis. Megan McCormick Mason. Rocco. Oh, Megal, Megal, hey Josh. You zealot, hey Josh. Ninja Breadman. Hello to Kiss Frenchwood. Evdog. Aaron Lord. Dr. Chuck. Llama Lad. Robot Arena. Greg Musto. SSJ Trogdor. Sprinkle Buns. Hi, first time, long time. Allie Rose. Mike Spaghetti Jones. Ollie Sutz. Mike Hart. Kate the Great. Gulliver. Cassandra Harris. Red Baron. Delta 8 made Steve Buscemi into a chili-making god. I don't know if I understand what that means. I don't either. I just say these. I just read them out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the book of names. This next name is my favorite. Kira and Brian are big fans. Also, you know what's big? Big, Nick Lane. I love the big corner we have. Soggy yeah, newspapers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little big bump in the book of names. <laughs> John W. Dakota Kemp. Chris Kulik. Blake Cavan. Dan Antonio! Farah, right? Saturn Video! Kiwi O'Flurv! Serial Killer X! Quest humbly asks, whoever reads this for a goblin to grade. Uh, I, did we do the weird Final Fantasy XIV goblins that have like the mask and the goggles yet? Let's try those guys. I don't think so. Yeah, grade those. Yeah. You, I don't know why I said that so dismissive. Grade, grade those, those yeah, grade quests. That. Yeah. Put, the, put that in your paper and grade it. <laughs> Jesse! Cole Gleason. Chris Curdo. Michael Malloy. Jesse Boggs. Kyle O'Neill. Kit Bush. Sirison. He over the moon. Goon, like a henchman. Cahoots. Dennis Wright. Cameron Gonzeveld. I just realized why Goon needed to specify what kind of a goon he was. I'm sorry, Goon, you did it first before it was a thing. Rat IRL. Wonderskin. We love chased gooning around here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dan, your hide. Matt Scepter. Greg Gervasi, a.k.a. Vita Zen. Brony underscore Danza. Anthony Stoker. Wonderskin again. I love this double Wonderskin, but also you should never put on two Wonderskins at the same time. No. It rubs each other out. Yeah, that's what it does. <laughs> Paul got tall and skied it on all tonight at 11. <laughs> Jesus. Paul's already was, pretty tall. I, Paul's I, already pretty tall. God. Imagine the height that he can ski. Yeah, I shudder to think. Oh. Max de la Fontanelle. Dog lips underscore Kajoyan. B. Anthony Rodriguez. Time eats flesh. Whoa. Yes, it does. Damn, dude. I wasn't ready for a truth bomb I in the middle know, of the book. It's too early in the day to think about it. S. Just a alpaca acquaintance. Howard. AKA Cyberbully. <laughs> It's the cyber dwarf right there. <laughs> Jeff, big baby, and his wife, not a big baby. You're back to being a big baby, Jeff. Good for you. Wow, blue gunge. Taraku, the thing that goes doink in the anime. Doink. Doink. Tron Legacy 3D starring Paul Ritchie is <laughs> I would watch the fuck out of that. God. I feel like if Paul were in this uh, physical realm, he'd appreciate all the Paul shoutouts this week. Just picturing him just spinning around with, like, frisbees in his hands. Just... <laughs> He's been trying. Blarbin, team pour over with light roast all day. Mm. 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 Do love light mm. roast. Gotta, be, gotta get back into that life. Starship Nine. Spencer Y. Logan Kilgus. Boss Ferratu. Greb Comics has become a slug. Whoa. Stay away from all the salt. Shadowheart Gun D. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus. What a name. Problem Child 2 on DVD. The better Problem Child. Whoa. Chris's Casa contains Cinco Canines. Oh, bark, bark, bark. I hope that's true. I hope, I hope you have that for your life. Canadian Ghoul gives scritches and millet to some of Chad's bird friends. Millet, 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 millet. R.I.P. Peyton Whaley, his parachute didn't open while flying over the Indiana droid. Let's have a moment of science for him. That is a really good reference. <laughs> Phaeton would live. He'd just land three-point landing Hulk style. Yeah, three-point landing hero, <laughs> hero stance and then go, did you know that this place used to be a fairground? <laughs> Kumquat Behavior Podcast. Elodie. Clint Deerking. Agents Miskatonic. Smellities. Nail 7. 
Angelo Edward Longton Santone. Caleb Snyder kept forgetting to change his name. Lumo Nuva. Brian Udaf. Ben. Floyos. Floyos. Floyosayer. Yeah. Floyos. yeah, Ben, how do you say that? Can you message us? We'd like to know. Help us, Ben. Herpy Derpy drowns in <laughs> dumb as shit sauce. <laughs> Yay. Brian Storo. Bob Cabbage. Oh no, my Bob Cabbages. The Shrekuro Nomicon. Pope Jafar of the Cult of the Eternal Flame offers the continuous candle to Paul's ice church efforts. Hmm. Number one, no. Number one, no. <laughs> Jolly old jewels. CL Reagan. Justin. Ryan Coyle. Jaybird. Taylor Garofalo. MC Wright. Tig ass biddies 007 smoke weed every day. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> Nintendo 60 jorts keep making good music. <laughs> Matt Noah. Old black man. Crazy ass nipples. Quinn. Jorge Rea Navarro. Jacob Leach. Daniel Lavelle. And welcome to the book of names, Mimal the Delf. <laughs> so the da- the dad elf? Tell us what that means. JK. Yeah, tell us what it means. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the book of names, Jim Corey. Thank you all so very much for your love and support. We love you. We love you. Goodbye. Goodbye.